Alright, so this is our lesson video for section 16.2 for Honors Chemistry. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Don't forget, an easy way to get access to all my videos is just subscribe, so then you'll just have all of them for the whole year in one easy place. Alright, so we're going to focus on concentrations of solutions in this section, and so we're going to be doing some math. So for those of you good at math, I love math personally, um, then you'll really like this section. For those of you who struggle in math, you're in chemistry, you're, we're going to do math. I don't know what to tell you. So we're going to focus on some ways to do concentration. Now keep in mind, there are others, so if you move on and go to college or things like that, you'll learn some other ones, but these are the ones that we focus on in high school. So the concentration of a solution is the measure of the amount of solute that is dissolved in a given amount of solvent. So it depends on really what units we're talking about as far as how we say our concentration. So a dilute solution is one that contains a small amount of solute and a concentrated is one that contains a large amount. So for example, if this is our water and we're adding something blue, we can just pretend like it's um, copper 2 sulfate or something like that that would be blue. When you just add a little bit, that color will start changing. The more you add, the darker the color gets and the more concentrated it gets because the more solute you've added. So the first form of concentration that we're going to learn is molarity. So I briefly discussed molarity in the section 1 video, so let's go a little more in depth. So molarity is represented by capital M. If you put a lowercase m, I will mark it wrong. That stands for meters. Now I personally do round the top of my m, but you can tell by the height of it that it's a capital M because every year I have students who try to point out that I'm not writing a capital M and I am. Um, so you know, whatever. Just make sure it's not small or that's meters and then I'll mark it wrong. Small m also stands for molality, which is something we will not discuss, but is another form of concentration. So just be careful. Make sure it's nice and big. All right, so molarity is the number of moles of solute dissolved in one liter of solution. So the units are moles per liter, which do not cancel. And so what we do is we write a capital M for molarity. So our formula is molarity equals moles of solute over liters of solution. So, let's look at how to do this. So, intravenous or IV saline solutions are often administered to patients in the hospital. One saline solution contains 0.9 grams of NaCl and exactly 100 milliliters of solution. What is the molarity of the solution? Well, molarity, as we already discussed, see, there's my capital M, um, is moles per liter. Well, the problem is they gave me grams and they gave me milliliters. So, y'all know I love converting, so let's go ahead and convert some stuff. So, we start with 0.9 grams of NaCl. And the way we convert from grams to moles is, of course, molar mass. So, you'll use your periodic table. Na is 23, Cl is 35. So, when you add those together, you get 58 grams. That, of course, goes on bottom because golden rule says whatever unit's on top goes on bottom. And that equals one mole of NaCl. And so once I divide, I got 0 0.016 moles of NaCl. So now that I have moles, that's a number I can actually plug in. I can't plug grams in. The other thing that they gave me is 100 milliliters, and we have to plug in liters. So again, I need to convert. Okay, remember there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter, so you can just take 100 and divide it by 1,000. Or some of y'all are more familiar with moving the decimal. So remember, 1,000 has three zeros, so we move the decimal three times. One, two, three. So that would give me 0.1 liters of solution, and so then I can plug that in. So once I have the correct units, I'm ready to plug in. So my moles is 0 0.016 moles, and we changed our 100 milliliters to 0.1 liter. And so once I divide, the moles and liters will not cancel, so I'll get 0 0.1 one six, and you can either put moles per liter or what you'll see me write is capital M for molarity. But if you write this, it's the same thing. Moles per liter and molarity are the same thing. You'll just see me always use molarity. All right, so let's see if y'all got that. I'm going to let y'all try a couple. There's all my work, but we just did that. All right, so y'all pause it real quick. Try these two. Remember, make sure you check your units before you try to plug in. All right, so hopefully you've already worked yours out, and let's see if you got them right. So it says a solution has a volume of 2 liters. Liters is perfect. I can plug that in. 
and contains 36 grams of glucose, and I was nice and gave you the formula, C6H1206, although you should know that. Um, what is the molarity of the solution? So remember, molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. Okay, well I have my liters, this one's fine, but I have grams. So we're going to have to convert. So again, to change grams to moles, you just use molar mass. So when you go to the periodic table, C is 12, H is 1, O is 16. You multiply by your subscripts. I think you get 180. Yep, that's what I got. 180 grams of glucose equals 1 mole. And of course, I know y'all aren't going to sit there and write out all the substances and everything, but you know I'm going to. So once I divided, I got 0.2 moles of glucose. So once I get my moles, now I have moles, now I have liters, and so then I just plug in. So my moles is 0.2 moles, and my liters is 2 liters. And so once I divide, I get 0.1 molar. Just like that. Alright, so hopefully you got that one right. Make sure you change grams to moles. Alright, and then the second one. It says the solution contains a volume of 250 milliliters, so I'm going to have to fix that, change it to liters, and contains 0.7 moles of NaCl. What's the molarity? So this time I gave you moles, but you had to fix uh, milliliters to liters. So of course molarity is moles per liter. So remember, one liter is a thousand milliliters. A thousand has three zeros. Move the decimal three places. Or you can just divide by a thousand. I mean, whichever way is easier for you to remember. Um, I just want you to get the right answer. All right, so then we can plug in. So we have 0.7 moles of our sodium chloride per 0.25 liters. And so when I divided, I got 2.8. And then, of course, my unit is molarity. All right, so hopefully you got both of those right. Like I said, the main thing is make sure you're plugging in the correct units. Molarity has to be moles of solute per liter of solution. You can't use grams, can't use milliliters, you have to follow that. Alright, so let's move on and look at what happens if you have to rearrange the formula. Because all the time I'm not going to ask you necessarily for molarity. Sometimes you may need to rearrange. So it says household laundry bleach is a dilute aqueous solution of sodium hypochlorite. Hopefully you remember hypochlorite, ClO minus 1. How many moles of solute are present in 1.5 liters of 0.7 molar sodium hypochlorite? All right, so in this case, we're not solving for molarity. They gave us molarity. We're solving for moles. All right, so as always, you just need to be able to rearrange a formula. So how do we get moles by itself? We multiply both sides by liters. So mole equals molarity times liters. So did they give me molarity? Check. Did they give me liters? Check. So I can plug the units in just the way they are. So my molarity is 0.7 molar and my liters is 1.5 liters. Now real quick, I am going to change molarity for just a second just to show you how units work. Okay, I'm really, really, really big on units. We all know this. So, Moles per liter. Molarity is moles per liter. So if you look, your liters will cancel and you'll be left with moles. That's how you end up with moles. Okay, your units are always going to work as long as you plug it in right. And then once I solved, I got 1.05 moles of sodium hypochlorite. So what that means is to make this concentration of our bleach we dissolve 1.05 moles of sodium hypochlorite in the 1.5 liters of solution total. All right? So you just have to be able to rearrange the formula. Still make sure your units are right, though, because having incorrect units in a rearranged formula is going to get you the wrong answer. All right, so y'all try these two. Double check your units before you plug in, and then... Um, Pause the video, try them, and then I will do them now, and you can check your answer. So it says, how many moles of ammonium nitrate, so I'm looking for moles, are in 335 milliliters of 0.425 molar ammonium nitrate? Well, they gave me molarity, which is what I needed, but the problem is they gave me milliliters. So remember, 1,000 milliliters in one liter, so this is going to become 
0.335 liters. Okay, so for this one, you did have to remember to change your milliliters to liters. So our formula is molarity is moles per liter. I'm solving for moles. So I multiply both sides by my liter. So it's molarity times liters. And so now that I converted my milliliters to liters, I can just plug in. So 0.425 molar times 0.335 liters. And so once I solve for that, I got 0.14 moles of ammonium nitrate. Ooh, start running out of room there. Okay, and so keep in mind, the reason that molarity times liters gives me moles is remember, molarity is just moles per liter, and so then those liters cancel, and they leave me with moles. All right, so hopefully you got that one right. Okay, remember to change milliliters to liters. So last one, the last one's kind of tricky just because some of y'all have trouble getting from moles to grams, even though we've been doing this since chapter 12, or really chapter 10. How many grams of solute? Now, I don't have grams. Like, my formula is molarity equals moles per liter. So I keep telling y'all, whenever it asks for grams, just solve for moles first. As long as we know the um, formula, CaCl2, I can get molar mass and change it to grams. So it says how many grams, so we're going to solve for moles, of solute are in 250 milliliters of 2 molar calcium chloride, CaCl2. So my molarity is fine, but my milliliters is not fine again, so I need to move that decimal, 1, 2, 3, and I get 0.25 liters, or divide by 1,000, it's the same thing. All right, and so I'm going to plug in my liters and my molarity. But I'm going to solve for moles first by multiplying both sides by liters. So moles equals molarity times liters, and so then I just plug in. So my molarity is 2.0. And my liters is 0.25. And remember, molarity is just moles per liter. So those liters cancel. And so once I multiply, I got something, 0.5 moles of calcium chloride. But the problem is, I didn't ask you for moles. I asked you for grams. So that's where we then have to use that molar mass. So one mole of calcium chloride. Whoop, equals, when I added it up, I got 110 grams. And so my moles cancel, I'm left with grams. I just do 0.5 times 110 and I got 55 grams. Whoop, and I'm going to run out of room again of calcium chloride. So in other words, I need 55 grams of calcium chloride in a 250 milliliter solution to make it a concentration of two molar. All right, so again, just check your units. The most common things people miss is forgetting, like a lot of people would stop right here at the 0.5 moles and not ever finish. Okay, so you gotta make sure your units are right. All right, so hopefully molarity is not too bad. I mean, I don't think it is, but then again, as y'all always point out, I'm the teacher, so. Alright, so it says, what are the molar concentrations of each of the ions present in a 0.025 molar aqueous solution of calcium nitrate? Now, this is where you need to go back and think deep when we talked about how to split up an ionic compound. So, first of all, let's write the formula, which we know that lots of you have trouble with because you don't know your polyatomic ions and all that kind of stuff. So, calcium is, of course, Ca with a positive 2 charge, and nitrate is NO3 with a negative one charge. So of course to balance, I need to have two nitrates because then I have two positives, two negatives, and it balances out. So that's the formula for calcium nitrate. When calcium nitrate dissolves, then we're gonna get one calcium with a positive two charge, and we're gonna get two nitrates. Okay, remember when we did that, we would pull that subscript up in front because all three ions are gonna break apart the nitrates are no longer bonded, so we don't want the two to be a subscript, but we do need to say that they are two. So we pull it up as a coefficient. All right, and so it says, what are the molar concentrations of each ion? Well, for every one of these that breaks apart, I'm going to get one calcium. So this is what it would look like. I mean, you don't need to <clears throat> necessarily do a mole ratio, but it's like a one-to-one. -one. one of these makes one of these. So if the molarity of this is this, the 0 
then the molarity of the calcium would just be 0 0.025. Alright, and you put brackets around something when you're implying it's the concentration of whatever's inside the brackets. Okay, so because for every one calcium nitrate that breaks apart, I get one calcium ion, then I know the concentrations are equal. But the thing is, whenever one calcium nitrate breaks up, I actually get two nitrates. So the concentration would be double of this. Okay, so that's what you got to be careful of, is looking at what happens when it breaks apart. So it's actually going to be two times the original concentration. And of course, two times that is going to give me 0.05. Okay, so if I ask you about ions, you just need to make sure to look at how many ions are you going to make when it breaks apart in solution. That's a common thing that people miss. Okay, remember, we've discussed all the way back since chapter 11 what it looks like when ionic compounds dissolve and how many you get and that type of thing. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too bad for you. So y'all can try the next one. Alright, so y'all try this one, and then of course just pause, try it, and then we'll go over it together. So let's go. It says, what is the molar concentration of potassium ions in a 0 0.015 molar solution of potassium carbonate? Okay, again, if you can't write the formula, you're not going to know the ratio of ions. So potassium is of course K, and it is positive 1. Carbonate is CO3, and it has a minus 2 charge. And so that means I have one positive but two minuses, so I need two potassium ions. So that way I'll get two positive and two negative to cancel out. All right, so next thing is, well, we, they only asked me about K plus this time. They didn't ask me about carbonate. All right, well, how many Ks am I going to get when this breaks apart? I'm going to get two. So what do I need to do to that molarity? Multiply it by two. That's all I have to do. <clears throat> So my concentration for potassium is just 2 times 0 0.015 molar. And so, of course, that gives me 0 0.03 <clears throat> molarity for my K+. Plus. All right. And so, like, for example, if this had been, <clears throat> sorry, goodness, if this had been potassium phosphate, potassium phosphate looks like this. So I would need a 3 then I would have multiplied my molarity times 3 because I got 3 Ks that time. Okay, so that's all you have to look at if you're asked about um, the concentration of just one ion. So hopefully you got both of those right. Um, so next thing is sometimes if I do ask you about one particular ion, you may have to resort back to mole fraction, which we've talked about before. And that's the mole of whatever component I ask you about over the total mole. So remember, it's like a percentage, but you didn't multiply by 100. So it's in the decimal form still. And then just keep in mind, molarity is moles of solute per liters of solution. So if I ask you about moles of just one component, then you would need to take into account only that one component. All right, so like if we were doing the, you know, moles of potassium ion from the previous one, we would only want moles of potassium. We wouldn't want moles of the... Um, carbonate or whatever it was attached to in that case. So the molarity of a solution does change with temperature. Okay, It does change with temperature because the contraction or expansion of the solution changes the volume. So as you heat or cool down a solution, now of course we know liquids and solids don't expand and contract as much as a gas, but they do still expand and contract. So as you heat it, that volume is going to get a little bit bigger well, volume is in the denominator, so that means if your denominator gets bigger, your molarity is going to go down a little bit. Versus if we cool it down and it contracts, that volume is going to get smaller, and since it's in the denominator, that means your molarity will get bigger. So you do need to keep that in mind. Molarity changes as temperature changes. That is one of the downfalls of molarity, um, picking that to be your concentration. There are other forms of concentration that don't change with temperature, and so depending on the application, that might be better for you to use. So let's look at an example. So it says an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid contains 36% HCl by mass. Calculate the mole fraction of HCl in the solution. 
Alright, so we know mole fraction is of course moles of our component, which in this case is HCl, over our total amount of moles. And then we know that molarity, of course, is the moles of our solute over the um, liters of our solution. All right, so for this one, let's look at what we have. So whenever you know the percentage of something, just like we did all the way back in empirical formula, it's best to assume you have 100 grams overall. So if we know that we have 100 grams total, and we know that since this is 36%, there's 36 grams of HCl. If we subtract, that will tell us how much is our solvent, which in this case is just water. Because how do I know it's water? It says aqueous solution. Remember, if it's an aqueous solution, it's something dissolved in water. So you have to be able to look out for those little clues. Okay, otherwise you might not know what the other part is. So of course, once I subtract, I'm gonna get 64 grams of water. This is a reminder that the leadership team will be meeting in the large conference room at 9 a.m. Leadership team in the large conference room at 9 a.m. Thank you. All right, so sorry about that. It's apparently going to happen every video. All right, so then if we're trying to get mole fraction, that means I don't need to be working with grams here. I need to be working with moles. So I'm going to start my 36 grams of HCl, and then just like we've been doing this whole lesson video, let's change it to moles. So Cl is about 35, H is about 1, so that's going to be 36 grams of HCl is 1 mole. So this makes for some easy math. So that gives me about 1 mole of HCl. And then I do the same thing for water. Okay, so I start with 64 grams of water. H is about 1 times 2. O is 16, so that's 18 grams for water. And so then when I saw for that one, I got 3.56 moles of water. All right, and then it says calculate the mole fraction of HCl. Well, for mole fraction, if you remember, we said it's X. It's the number of moles of just that component over number of moles total. Okay, um, I know I put it in word form in the previous slide, but you know earlier um, in another chapter we learned it in this format. So I just do that. So my moles of what I care about, which is HCl, is one mole over my total number of moles. Don't do over the other component. You have to do over the total, which would of course be 4.56 moles total. Okay, so see that's a common mistake that I see too, is you want to do moles of one thing over moles of the other thing. It's moles of whatever component we're asked about over the total moles, which of course is 4.56 moles. I'm not going to put a substance because, of course, it's total. And so when I solved, I got 0.22. Now remember, mole fraction is unitless because what do moles do? They cancel. Remember, it's like a percentage, but since we don't multiply by 100, there's no percent sign. All right, and so that's how you would do this one. So in this one, we didn't need to use molarity at all once we assume 100 grams. So if you get a percentage, assume 100 grams, and you can figure out how much the other substance is because it's a ratio. So you can pick any amount to start with. Um, but 100 is always the easiest. All right, so let's erase and see if you can get one right on your own. <clears throat> All right, so y'all try this one real quick. Pause the video, try it, and then we'll go over it together. So a commercial bleach solution contains 3.62 mass percent of sodium hypochlorite in water, calculate the mole fraction of sodium hypochlorite in the solution. So we're talking about bleach again. All right, so what we know is we have 3.62% by mass of our sodium hypochlorite. So let's do the same thing we did last time. Let's assume there's 100 grams total. So that means 3.62 grams is our sodium hypochlorite. Now, because in class, I know you are more used to seeing um, hypochlorite as ClO, I'm going to switch it, but it's okay if you leave it as OCl. It doesn't matter. Depending on what application is what depends on how we arrange the elements. All right, so I'm going to subtract so I can figure out how much of it is water. 
Okay, because see, it didn't tell me aqueous solution this time. Now, I personally know that it's going to be water just because I already know what bleach is, but this time it does tell you in water, so you do know. Not that calculating mole fraction matters what the other substance is, it's just I like to know what it is. Um, so, once I subtract, I got 96.38 grams of water. But remember, when we're dealing with mole fraction, we need moles. We don't want grams. So, let's go ahead and convert both. So I start with my 3.62 grams of my sodium hypochlorite. When I added up sodium hypochlorite off the periodic table, Na is about 23, about 35, and about 16. And so when I added those together, I got about 74 grams. And of course, one mole. And remember, we put the grams on bottom so that, that way our units will cancel. And so when I solved, I ended up getting 0.049 moles. of our sodium hypochlorite. So we're halfway there. We know how much sodium hypochlorite, now we need moles total. All right, so I start my water, 96.38 grams of water, and just like on the previous slide, we decided water has a molar mass of 18 grams per mole. And so when I solved for that, I got 5.35 moles of water. So remember, our mole fraction is calculated. Our mole fraction of, in this case, sodium hypochlorite is number of moles of sodium hypochlorite over number of total moles. Okay, so I take my moles of sodium hypochlorite, which is the 0 0.049, and then I put that over the total moles, which when you add those together, you get 5.399 moles total. So I put my 5.399 moles on bottom. Moles, of course, cancel. I'll put my sodium hypochlorite on the top just because I like to have units. Um, remember, I'm going to leave off total on the bottom because that doesn't really matter. So my moles cancel, and when I divided, I got 0 0.0091. And again, it is a dimensionless, um, unitless uh, answer, so I just leave it as is. All right, so hopefully you got that right. So let's move on. So this formula should kind of make you think a little bit of like a gas law, it's like think of Boyle's law, P1B1 equals P2B2. It's going to be similar, but of course we have different substances. So diluting a solution reduces the number of moles of solute per volume, but does not change the total number of moles of solute in a solution. So when you dilute something, you add more solvent. So think